Welcome back for this afternoon. Uh, we are going to have now uh, the first talk of uh, Kyung Lang Li uh, about harmonic maps and Higgs bundle. Thank you. So, and the first talk will be very basic because I will introduce uh, all the almost all the necessary definitions to help you uh, get to the end about Higgs bundles. But in the in the long journey, we will see harmonic maps appear. Okay, so today is mainly preliminary things. The next talk will be about some research things about harmonic maps. So we first fix X as a Riemann surface of genus at least two. And we start the definition as a Holomorphic structure on a complex vector bundle E is a differential operator E bar from sections of E to zero one form valued at E. That is fine. The Lagrange rule, that is B bar E of F sigma equal to B bar of F times sigma plus F times B bar E of sigma where this f is the smooth function on x and sigma is a section of E. And I call a section sigma of E holomorphic if d bar E of sigma equal to zero. And the next object is a connection. A connection on a, vector, on a vector bundle E is a differential operator Lapla from sections of E to one forms valued at E. So this is the main difference with the previous one. That is fine. Lapla F sigma equal to DF times sigma plus F times Lapla sigma. And we can generalize to Lapla on omega k of xe to omega k plus one of xe. By extending the definition here as Lapla of alpha sigma where alpha is a k form and sigma is a, let's always say a complex bundle. So this is just the d alpha tensor with the sigma plus minus one to the k of alpha wedge d sigma. So we just remember there is a signature here. In particular, we can compose 
This lambda tries from from sections to two forms valued in E. So this is uh, from section to two form. And surprisingly, it's actually the infinity of x linear. It is not automatic. If you see the original two lambda has this uh, extra part out. So this is called uh, the curvature operator. of Lapla, denoted as alpha of Lapla. So because it's C infinity linear, so it's in omega two of X as valued in endomorphism of E. So call a connection, Lapla is flat if the curvature vanishes. So a vector bundle together with a Lapla, which is flat, actually give rise to a representation draw from the base surface to GL and C by considering its holonomy. But actually, we can rewrite this, uh, this E lapla by this uh, representation row. So in fact, uh, it's equal to a, a vector bundle purely constructed from this row. So this is x tilde times with rho as cn. And here, Lapla is a later connection. Just means locally, the chart, the trivialization is just the, uh, a domain times cn, and my connection is just differential d. So this uh, bundle together with this nature connection actually leads to, to the universal cover, on the universal cover, we have the trivial bundle and we have the, just the trivial, connect, just this connection which is doing differential. So this is on X, this is on X tilde. So this is, a, whenever we have a representation, we can think of the smooth object as this pair. We have a vector bundle together with a flat connection. And if we look at the connection and the holomorphic structure, we can easily see that decompose a connection into one zero part and zero one part. This Laplace zero one part is a nature it's also a holomorphic structure. Just means uh, give, give me a connection, I can get a holomorphic structure out of it. But uh, conversely, given a holomorphic structure, d bar e, there are a lot of uh, connections such that uh, zero one part is d bar e. So there is no right correspondence between connection and the holomorphic structure. So because of this reason, we introduce one more structure as a Hermitian structure. A Hermitian structure on E, still a complex vector bundle, is a C infinity family 
of Hermitian inner products. on each fiber of E. And then for the convention, I need to say the Hermitian inner product is C linear on the second variable and C anti-linear conjugate linear on the first one. So now we can say what means, what does the connection being, compa being compatible with the Hermitian structure means. So definition, a connection is called uh, unitary on a Hermitian vector bound, which means a vector bound together with a metric H. If it satisfies, whenever I have two sections on E, I do derivative on this uh, function, it's uh, the same as uh, doing on each variable. So equivalently, this means uh, the lambda of A C itself equal to zero. So finally, we can we can make this uh, Better is the theorem, but also a definition for a holomorphic vector bundle E together with a Hermitian structure H. There exists a unique connection Laplace such that satisfying two conditions with respect to the holomorphic structure with respect to this Hermitian structure. The first one is a zero one part is the holomorphic structure and it's unitary. So this connection is called the Chern connection. So now, suppose we are given a representation. This with uh, i.e. the data of uh, a complex vector bundle together with a flat connection. So we are given with uh, such data. How do we get uh, more structures on X? Because right now we just have one connection. So then we want to introduce a Hermitian metric. The lemma, any connection Lapla on E on a Hermitian bundle E plus a metric H is decomposed into two parts written as Laplace H plus Psi H. Okay. 
where our Laplace H is unitary. So a priori, the, the connection and the metric H are not, have no connection at all. But we can always find the part which is compatible with our metric H. And then our psi H is a Hermitian adjoint. Let's say it's H Hermitian. That means if we have H on S psi HT is equal to H of psi HS. So this is a unique decomposition because we can we can really write psi h of st as one half of h of ds t h of s la la t minus d of h st. So you can see if my original Laplace is unitary, there is no psi h. So the next question is, this decomposition is unique with a particular h, but if we just start with E Laplace, we have so many h to choose to get this decomposition. So the next question is, what is the best H? So we give a definition as H is called harmonic if it's a critical point of a functional defined on, on, the, on all permission metrics. Or is the, the functional defined on H as a, we pair with the side H with itself. So we, we will see what's this definition and over x, the volume of x. So you see if we change at h, we have this, this square also change, but we are looking for the critical point. Psi is one form, psi h. Is this the first one? Oh, yes, so here I'm using the generalized definition. Whenever I see a form, we, I just use a tensor. Psi h s t. So here, oh, okay. I think I, I write, uh, let me see. Oh, yes, yes, correct. Thank you. H over psi H S T. Yes. So here, first, let's say what's, what's the pairing for psi H and psi H. So we know psi H is in omega one of X valued in the endomorphism of E. So right now I'm not using the property that is Hermitian. I just use where it stays. So the pairing here is just for the one form, I use the base metric on the surface X. 
So now I'm, I'm using a metric which is conformal to the Riemann surface structure. Any metric conformal to that one is okay because if I choose a conformal factor here, the factor comes out, but then it's canceled here. But anyway, normally I choose the hyperbolic metric inside that conformal class. So for the omega one, we are okay. But for the endomorphism of E, we just use the pairing on endomorphism bundle induced from EH, induced from the original Hermitian metric on E. In particular, let's say a formula for A, B, both in omega one, and the morphism of E was the pairing I'm talking about. The pairing is such that it times the volume form is equal to A wedge of star of B. So here the star is from omega one taking just the dx to dy and the dy to minus dx. Okay. So here is just the trace of Let me, okay. so recall, the Hodge star originally just on the one forms over the surface is defined in this way. But now we generalize the definition on this X valued in endomorphism of E. Okay, so it just takes So dx goes to dy a of this times a of star h of dy. Similarly, a of dy to a star h times minus dx. So it's just that we separate do this star operation. On the one form, it's just the original Hodge star, but on the sections in the bundle, we used the or we use the Hermitian joint with respect to the metric on H. So after using this definition, this is the Hodge star here, we have the original thing. So this is one form, I also get one form. So on the right hand side is a two form. And on the left hand side is also a true form. So equivalently, let's say the Euler Lagrange equation for this critical point. Equivalently, for H being harmonic, it just means Plus H on star of psi H equal to zero. So again, we have we need to say what what does this mean? So, so star of psi h is again inside this omega one x valued in the endomorphism bundle. Our nabla h was defined on the bundle itself, but we have induced the connection on the endomorphism bundle. And moreover, on the one form valued in the endomorphism bundle. So this is just the same notation, induced the connection from the original one. So 
this uh, harmonic metric uh, is our candidate for being the best age. So the next ther theorem is uh, saying when it exists. Let uh, and Donaldson show that uh, if D is uh, a flat, Irreducible, irreducible flight connection on E. Then there is a, a harmonic metric H on E. So the, it's unique uh, irreducible. Yeah. So here irreducible just means uh, there is no D invariant uh, proper sub bundle. So here, the harmonic metric is unique up to scaling. Let's see. Uh, First, discuss a little bit. Here we encounter this name harmonic, but this name harmonic is for the metric on a vector bundle. But uh, normally, when we talk about harmonic, we talk about harmonic maps. It's not a, for metric on the bundle. So we will later see that uh, the name here is not uh, uh, is uh, another thing for harmonic, it actually means harmonic map if we interpret everything correctly. But uh, right now, we just go one step further to see how Higgs bundles come out. So first, the definition, a Higgs bundle on the Riemann surface X is a pair E phi, where E is a holomorphic vector bundle. And phi is a holomorphic map from E to the bundle E twisted by our holomorphic cotangent bundle over X, and I denote it as K. So just the, this is one form. So now, let's just say we already have a harmonic metric. So given a harmonic metric H on the pair, just our vector bundle E together with a flat connection. So let's say what, here is just to start with a representation, rho, which is irreducible. It will give rise to such thing by this theorem here. It just means that we have starting with, with a reducible representation row. Now we have ED together with the harmonic metric H. With this data here, EDH, we can decompose our D into the unitary connection plus psi H. 
okay? So just by that lemma there. And we can do one step more because we are on Riemann surface, we can talk about one zero part and zero one part. So we can talk about uh, Nabla H is one zero part plus Nabla H is zero one part plus the psi H of one zero part plus psi H of zero one part. And uh, in particular, we obtain the pair where our original E together with this uh, zero one part of our unitary connection Nabla H. And uh, with this psi H one zero part. So this uh, of course, is a holomorphic structure. So we are almost there that we have a Higgs bundle because first our bundle E has a holomorphic structure and we need something nice in the one zero form. The only thing we don't know is whether it's holomorphic. So so we just need to check this part is holomorphic with respect to this holomorphic structure. In fact, this pair, so if we put the, the holomorphic structure on E, maybe say this tuple is a Higgs bundle. So this is one direction. So we only start from a reducible representation. And then we, we, we get to, from the representation, we get the ED, a flat connection. But from the irreducible property, we get the harmonic metric existence. And from this, we can decompose our connection into this form. And then in the end, we get a Higgs bundle out of it. Let's just check a little bit why this zero one part on our side A to one zero part equal to zero. So this is because we have two equations. The first equation is the harmonic property. This is a harmonicity. And the second property is the curvature of lambda equal to zero. This is a flatness. And this is the second equation. If we write in terms of Nabla H plus psi H, it's equivalent to two equations, which is the curvature of Nabla H plus psi H with psi H equal to zero, and then Nabla H on psi H equal to zero. And we write this as A, B, C. And we can see the property A plus property of C, in fact, give us the equation there.
This is because uh, if I do psi, uh, star on psi h, when I write psi h as a psi h one zero part plus psi h of zero one part, let's say as a phi dz plus phi star of dz bar. So we can always write psi h into these two terms. So phi star here with respect to this phi is just because the psi h is a H Hermitian. So here star on phi dz plus phi star dz bar is just equal to. So here I need to use this Hodge star as a conjugate union to make everything um, right. So this will be phi star because phi goes to phi star. That's what we do on the on the endomorphism part, endomorphism of E. And the DZ goes to I DZ bar plus phi, because phi star goes to phi, and DZ bar goes to minus I DZ. So we can rewrite our A. So equation A implies the Laplace H on this phi star times I D Z bar plus phi times minus I D Z equal to zero. And then C gives us the Laplace H of phi D Z plus the phi star D Z bar equal to zero. And then we can just do a linear combination here. Lapla H of psi H plus I star bar of psi H. So it's just the, the, the second equation plus i times the first equation. So we can see if we times the i, this i square equal to minus one. So these two canceled. So we get lambda of two phi dz. And because it's always equal to zero. So this tells us the Laplace H of phi dz equal to zero, which is exactly the psi h one zero part. Now, we say y core such metric H harmonic Recall the definition of harmonic maps for the definition of equivalent harmonic maps. Given f from the M's universal cover to N which is a pi one M equivalent So that means we have a representation of pi one M into some group acting on N between two Riemannian manifolds.
So we have DF is inside the section of tangent bundle of Tn by pullback tensor with the cotangent bundle of M tilde. So it just is a tangent vector in M tilde and it gives back a tangent vector in the N. So we can consider the function one half of f, let's say f pairing on m tilde. And then this is denoted as ef. For the energy density. Function. Because the equivalence of our map F, this function will eventually also be invariant under this group action. So it actually descends to a function on M itself. So we can also consider the functional on this map F as the integration over M with this descended energy density on the manifold arm. So this is called the energy. Of F. So F is called the harmonic. If it's a critical point of this energy function. So now we want to identify for our metric being harmonic is equivalent to some map being harmonic. So what's our, so we need the two steps. Step one is identify the Hermitian metric H as an equivalent, an equivalent map. And secondly, this two harmonic definition coincide. the time. I have more time. I have, a, it's until 4.15, right? Yeah, okay, sorry. So step one. Let's first say the space of permission matrix on CD is identified as all the matrix N, all the matrix S such that S is Hermitian and S is positive definite.
So a uh, hemisymmetric H on E. So here we need to just not just the E itself, but we always work with E together with a flat connection D will be equivalent to a I want uh, equivalent map F from the universal cover to N. So this is the right domain and target. So one way is just to think of parallel transport the Hermitian matrix inner product on each fiber EX to a fixed fiber, say EX0. With respect to, to this flat connection D, so along the path. Connecting x and x zero. So it just uh, we consider all the paths based at uh, x starting from x zero, and we just uh, pull back all the other fibers, uh, inner product, the Hermitian matrix on other fibers going back to this x zero. So we only need to to think about whether this uh, parallel transport depending on this path. But since our connection is flat, so it's only depending on the homotopy class of, of such paths. So then we don't need to go to the space of paths to the space of matrix, but we only need to go to the universal cover of X. So another way, It's just to think of our ED already come from a representation. So ED is already the x tilde times rho times Cn with the natural connection. So we are, we are asking a Hermitian metric on this bundle. So this is an associated bundle for the principal bundle x tilde over x. So from the relationship between associated bundle and the principal bundle, we know that a Hermitian metric the same as F goes to from X tilde to the space of N by writing in the following way is F of X equal to H at a, a point of X with ST is equal to S 
conjugate transpose times my f evaluate at x times t. For every two sections, st of x theta times cn. So I'm just realizing the section of this associated bundle as also the map from x theta to cn. So Let's see. Okay, I don't need to, to, to do that. So I just, uh, I just uh, first uh, for every point, I have two sections, and then at that point, there are vectors. And I just uh, realize it as a metric. And because of this uh, relationship, I can easily see that. Uh, I have to satisfy the equivalent property, which is f of x equal to rho gamma of t of f gamma of x times rho gamma. So now we go to step two. What was the conjugation? Oh, yes, it's up to conjugation. Yes. So, step two is uh, we need to, we will see the following lemma is the psi h equal to minus one half of f inverse df. So this is very important because uh, using this, uh, we can see the two ways of defining the, for the map we define energy functional and for the metric we define this functional, we can also call it energy functional for the metric. And then we will see that uh, using this, uh, we almost see these two coincide. Let's first say, assuming this lemma is true. We first understand the metric on N. For every two points x, two tangent vector at A to N, which is a Hermitian, matrix, the pairing for these two vector is defined as trace of A inverse x, A inverse y. So this is purely matrix multiplication. And this is a unique CLCD invariant matrix on the base n up to scaling. Now we say EH is equal to EF. Maybe there is a constant here. Why this is true? This is equal to X of DF DF. One half. And the pairing, we already see the definition is by using the F. So by definition of the pairing there is one half of trace 
F inverse BF, F inverse BF. So here I, I need to say that uh, this pairing is for the tangent, for the, there is a one form on the base manifold. So I'm, I need also pairing that one form, but uh, I will see it's, uh, it's just this one. I remember the, the form there already. But since our F, in, F inverse DF is the psi H, okay, I think that there is a something. Whenever I see one form, I need to do the Hodge star. So this is the right one for the end of, for the Tangent vector for the target, uh, we have the trace, but for the one form, we have this uh, Hodge star. So here the Hodge star is uh, trivial on the one forms. So the pairing on one form times the volume form is the two forms with this Hodge star. And because the psi H is a Hermitian itself, even though we have this uh, Hodge star, using different definition. One is only on one form, one is on one form and the endomorphism bundle, they coincide on psi H. So here, this is one half of psi H, psi H. The volume form. Two. clear. So this is the dilemma connecting our psi H and this tangent vector DF in this way is a key of saying why the harmonicity for the metric and the map are the same. Because they are critical point for the same functional. So now we give a quick proof of the lemma. We just use the definition of our F coming from this H. It's S conjugate transpose times F times T. So this is X, this is the So we have uh, two equations. The first, uh, we need to say the original Laplace, the, our flat connection decomposed into Laplace H plus psi H. But if we leave to the universal cover, our Laplace is actually D. And here we, we say tilde plus psi H tilde, but uh, just use the same name. So the, for the first one is uh, the compatibility between Lapla H and our H. So this is uh, H of Lapla H S T plus H of S Lapla H T. So this is uh, Lapla H being unitary. And secondly, is uh, we can write uh, this thing using our F to express it again. So for the, we can say this is, a, we use the product rule. The first one do S bar T times F X T plus S conjugate transpose T 
And here is the df times t plus s fx times dt. So here d is uh, using this uh, summation. So we can write this in terms of uh, saying h of uh, df t, because this is the definition of fx. So it's pairing ds and t. And for the second one, we don't have uh, another way to write it. For this one is h of s and dt. So we can we can get to the previous two parts by writing d as lambda h plus i t. So we have lambda h s t plus h of psi h s t. So here plus f conjugate transpose d f t. So for the last term is h of s lambda h t. And we have one more, it's psi h t. And because psi h is a Hermitian, we can cancel this by saying this is true. Okay, so we can compare the first and second. We have the last line equal to zero. So this uh, gives us the right thing. If we write h in terms of f out. Let's uh, say one more thing is uh, from Higgs bundles. Two representations. Because the previous lecture is about from a representation, how do we get a Higgs bundle? And the representation we add the condition as irreducible. So, but if we start from Higgs bundles, the theorem, Heating and Simpson, is the same given if phi a stable Higgs bundle. So I didn't explain stable, but it's a corresponding constraint with, for the irreducible on representation. We here we need a stability. A stable Higgs bundle of degree zero There exists a unique, uh, again, this uniqueness is up to a multiple, a Hermitian metric. H, such is that. We can build a connection out of this given data. The, to the lemma. Uh, so we go one more step. <laughs> uh, let me use this one better. So, so because it's the same. Okay. Psi h t. So this is a two of s conjugate transpose f times the psi h t plus s conjugate transpose d f times t equal to zero. This is arbitrary for s and t, then we get to
So the new collection constructed from this data here, we get uh, first, uh, we say there is a chain connection. The chain connection is uh, uniquely determined by a holomorphic vector bundle plus a Hermitian metric, which we already have. So this is the chain connection. Plus our Higgs field phi and then is a Hermitian joint. So this uh, is a new connection. And we want a Hermitian metric H such that uh, this connection is flat. And then by considering is a holonomy of the holonomy of this B, we get a, a representation. So this is the direction from Higgs bundles to representation. And then it seems that we add conditions from, from both sides. So why these two directions coincide is because here, from a stable Higgs bundle, we obtain a flat connection. Moreover, we can easily show that uh, this D is irreducible. That means uh, the vector bound, the flat connection comes from Higgs bundle is always uh, irreducible from a stable Higgs bundle. But actually going back from a representation to Higgs bundle, previously I didn't say that in fact the Higgs bundle we obtain is stable. So these two directions are exactly matched up. So now let me briefly give more connection between the harmonic maps and the Higgs bundles. Harmonic maps in terms of Higgs bundles. So firstly, we say energy density. Yeah. Remember is the definition of the norm square of df quotient 2. But we can also write it in terms of Higgs field. And of course, the metric solving, the metric there, the metric H there. So we can write EF is one half of df df. So it's also equal to two of trace of psi h wedge psi star of psi h. Quotient the background evolving form of it. So this is two form, we are quotient a two form. So this is equal to what's psi h in terms of our Higgs field phi? Psi h is always written in, written in terms of phi. Is if I want to write a phi as actually phi dz, okay, plus phi star dz bar locally. So this is the decomposition of our set H into one zero part and zero one part.
So this is the trace of phi star plus phi star of phi phi bar, wedge of phi star times i dz bar minus phi i dz, portioning phi volume of x. So we only, inside the trace, we only see two non-zero part, which is a B phi star, dz. So we get a four i of trace B phi star times dz with the dz bar, quotient the volume form. And then, What's the volume form of x? Is that the background metric g0 times dx dy, with dy. So it's actually one half times i dz, with dz bar. So we just do this, it's eight trace of phi phi star, quotient g0. This is really the translation between harmonic maps and the Higgs bundles. So in many times, the harmonic maps derivative is not explicit at all. But in, very, in many cases, the Higgs field might be explicit. The phi might be explicit. Maybe not phi star, but some, sometimes it gives the information from this formula than the original formula. So of course the energy EF is just the integration of energy. Which is eight of trace fifty star. And certainly is about the pullback metric. Of F. So this is pullback metric is on pull back the metric on the target n. So we decompose into two zero part, one one part, and a zero two part. This is equal to four of trace phi square of dz cube, a dz square plus four of trace phi phi star times dz dz bar plus dz bar dz, plus the conjugation of this part. So know that this is the conjugate of the original one. Last penny is about curvature of the harmonic map. So I want to just give a formula and then explain next time a little bit. So for the tangent plane, sigma to f x theta. Curvature for this tangent plane is equal to trace of phi phi star square over trace of phi phi star square minus trace of phi square norm square. So this is by 
understanding the curvature formula in the symmetric space, which is very similar to this, but uh, input uh, the relationship between the Higgs field and uh, the tangential map of our F. Then it's just uh, having these formulas. In particular, we know that at the immersed point, K sigma equal to zero, if and only if, B and the phi star equal to zero. I think I'll stop here. Thank you. The curvature calculate in the in the manifold N. With, with the metric on N, yes. But for harmonic map from the surface, the, this curvature already, it's, uh, it's already found our pullback metric. So the pullback metric's curvature is always more negative than the ambient, if we say this is ambient curvature. is non-positively curved. So this is a priori, this is not a necessary um, negative because there are, there are two, two things that will be um, commute. So if we, if we want to say the, the image of F is never tangent to a flat, we need to say phi and phi star is never zero. The new bracket of them is never zero. So it's just that we can translate the, the data of harmonic map into the, these formulas, that's the thing. 